Fire Squad, I'm working on a campaign in 2023 to help students through scholarship efforts. We know exactly how challenging it can be to reach your financial requirements. That's why I would love any contribution and support to help someone reach their full potential. The link will be in the description. Any contribution and support is greatly appreciated. See you in the video. You already know what it is. It's your boy Laid Back with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, Jordan Peterson, you up to bat. Bye. It's your boy Laid Back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. The key is to be free in 2023. The key is to be free in 2023. Back with another reaction. We got my man Jordan Peterson, but we got woke student tries to frame and cancel Jordan Peterson. Gets destroyed instantly. Now, you know Jordan Peterson be in his bag, especially when you're trying to come at him. You got to make sure you're coming at him right. You just can't be saying all that shit. I ain't say that. I ain't say that. Let's go ahead and get into it. Fire Squad. What's popping? Let's get it. <laughs> Is that sufficient? But, but you sort of do have certain predispositions that you're giving in the same way in which people from political correctness are trying to say, this is what it means to be a woman. These are the kind of things that it is expected from a woman to do to defend herself. And it seems to me that you are making a similar claim about, this is what conservative people do, and this is how they always relate to hierarchy. Well, I don't, I, I would say that I perhaps am doing that, but I don't see how that's the same as what the postmodernists are doing. I mean, as far as I can tell, the postmodernists aren't saying that the groups, the individuals within those groups are characterized by any stable characteristics whatsoever, except for the fact of their comparative oppression. Mm. Like, so I don't understand the first part of your argument. I mean, part of the reason the postmodern types have been going after me is because I, I've dared to say that men and women differ in temperament, which, by the way, they do. <laughs> so, now, you know, that, that's actually, that, People that's actually that. something that might be worth just di differentiating quickly, because it's actually technically somewhat challenging, but also very much worth knowing. I was debating, um, someone on a panel this morning on a TV show, the right f stuff. Um, <laughs> and this was a woman who led the female, the, the Women's Equality Party. And she cited some psychological literature that purported to claim that men and women were mostly the same. And that's actually true. Yeah. We are more the same than different. If you look at our temperaments, there's more overlap than there is variance by a substantial amount. Mm -hmm. And so even, on the temperamental dimensions where there is most difference between men and women, the difference isn't of massive magnitude at the center of the distribution. So for example, women are less aggressive than men, which is by the way why they commit suicide, try to commit suicide more often, but are much less lethal in their actions. Mm. That's one example, but there are many examples. That's crazy. If you draw a random woman and a random man out of the population, the probability that the man will be more aggressive is 60%. If you bet on the man, you'd win 60% of the time. That's not a walloping difference. It's not 95% of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a difference that is substantive. It's significant. It's measurable. But it's not large by the standards by which such things are judged. Right. But that's not the point. The point is, is that most of the activity takes place at the extremes. So out on the tails of the distribution. So here's an example. <clears throat> About nine out of 10 people in prison are male. Why? Because to be in prison, you have to be the most aggressive person, let's say in a hundred. Mm. Okay. Those differences at the midpoint are large enough so that if you go out to the extremes, one in a hundred people, you have an overwhelming preponderance of men. And so you can have your cake and eat it too. You can say, well, you this is what I like about him because he going to break it down for you. He going to give you the numbers. He going to give you the statistics behind it. You know what I'm saying? He not just going to give you, he just not going to blurt out something and not give you some substantial evidence and findings and research about what he's talking about. I like that about him. Yeah, broadly speaking, men and women are more the same than different. The, o the overlap is greater than the, than the, than the disjunction. But that's not relevant if what's being selected is often at the extremes, and it often is. 
So for example, with regards to engineering, there's a fair bit of evidence that people who are more interested in things than in people become engineers. Mm. Now, that's not really gonna be, what is that, shocking? Are you shocked by that? You shouldn't be shocked by that, right? You can, you can tell that not only by what engineers do, but you can tell that by how they think, and you can tell that just by talking to them, if you know a bunch of engineers. So, and it turns out that the largest temperamental difference that's known between men and women is actually interest in people versus interest in things. Mm. And so it has nothing to do with competence, but it has a lot to do with interest. And because you have to be very interested in things to go be an engineer, because that's all you're going to be doing if you're an engineer, then only those people who are extremely interested in things tend to become engineers. And most of them are men. Mm. And that's why even in places like Scandinavia, where a tremendous amount of effort has been put into flattening the sociocultural landscape, and successfully, by the way, there's still a preponderance of male engineers. And there's a preponderance of female nurses. And no matter how much sociological gerrymandering goes, along, goes on, those statistics have remained quite intractable over about a 15-year period. And so there are differences. There are differences. Mm -hmm. They're not massive. And then you might ask, well, are those sociocultural or biological? It's like, well, that's a hard question to answer because it depends on how much variability there is in the sociocultural landscape because the proportion by which something is biological versus sociocultural varies with the sociocultural landscape. That's a complicated thing to, to, to digest because you think of those things as fixed, but they're not. So, but what we have demonstrated quite clearly and this is mainstream science, despite the fact that people don't like it. This test has already been done. So we, we developed a personality model that's pretty stable across cultures, purely derived from statistical, from statistical processes, an atheoretical model, if there ever was one, and quite an unattractive model because of that, conceptually. But that's beside the point. Then we saw, cross-culturally, whether there were differences in the fundamental temperaments of men and women. And the answer was yes, cross-culturally, quite robust. Women are higher in the experience of anxiety and emotional pain, and they're mm. more compassionate and agreeable. Those are the big differences. And they're, they're differences of a magnitude that I already pointed out. Then the next question is, well, to what degree is that biological versus sociocultural? And it's complicated because that vari variable depends on the sociocultural landscape, but we'll put that aside. You can determine that by stacking up countries from those who have done everything they possibly can to flatten out the sociocultural landscape in relationship to gender to those who haven't, that are still very stratified by, by sex. And then what you do is you look at the magnitude of the temperament differences in keeping with the, the variability that those countries have in terms of their sociocultural egalitarianism. And the sociocultural types, the, the, um, the social constructionists, their prediction is as cultures become more egalitarian, Men and women become more different, more the same, sorry, more the same, because it's environmental. That isn't what happens. Exactly the opposite happens. As you flatten out the sociocultural landscape, men and women become more different. Mm. The data is in, the experiment is done. Tens of thousands of people, multiple countries. Mm. And it's not what anyone expected. And you might think, wow. well, it's all the right-wing psychologists. It's like. All the right-wing psychologists are in this room, sitting in this chair. <laughs> Alright, so that was Jordan Peterson. Woke student tries to frame and cancel Jordan Peterson, gets destroyed instantly. Um, I always say I like this dude, Jordan Peterson, man. You know what I'm saying? Because he gonna give you facts behind what he's saying. And on top of that, he gonna explain it to you. Like he gonna lay it out for you. And truth of the matter is, you know, it's like, I don't know why people find it so hard to believe or want to believe that it is differences between being a man and a woman or how we view things or different perspectives. I don't think it necessarily makes one person stronger than the other or whatever. But I think in certain instances, men are better at certain things and women are better at certain things. I just think that's just, how we just biologically program from birth you know what i'm saying like i just that's just what i believe i don't think necessarily nothing's wrong with that you know what i mean like i don't think that has to be a, a negative 
in regards to a woman being stronger in this area than a man or a man being stronger than, I don't think so. But you let me know in the comments, man. Also, hit that subscribe button. Till next time, self-love and positivity. Fire Squad, I got you and you know it. Hey.